Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now here in my hands, my Ruger 1022 outfitted with a Magpul X22 Hunter stock and well, completely camouflaged. This here is Kuyu Camouflage, so the Kuyu Vias Camouflage with a kit done by the company Gunskins. Now in a prior video, I took you through the installation of this gun skin pretty much from beginning to end, but today it's about my handgun. So here, my SIG P365XL. Again, you can see here in the Kuyu Vias. Now this was a pretty substantial project to get this done. It takes a while, probably about four hours from beginning to end, maybe a little less, but with distractions about four hours. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna talk to you about this at length. I think there's a number of considerations you need to think about if you're getting into a modification like this. Now, it's not so much a modification, but it kind of is, we'll get into that. So what we'll do, I'll bring you through the thought process. I'm gonna take you through the installation steps so you can see what it takes to get this on here in the event that you're interested in doing this to your own firearm. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Gunskins who did provide this for review. So yes, the Gunskins Pistol Skin Kit here in Kuyu Vias. Now there's a ton of different colors. I just happen to be a fan of Kuyu Vias. I do like Kuyu products. I do a lot of sort of deep mountain hiking. Kuyu products, just real nice, high quality and almost elite products. And their Kuyu Vias, I find to be very effective. I personally like to kind of blend in with my surroundings when I'm out in the wilderness. The Kuyu Camouflage is doing a fantastic job. Now, not that I expect to go bringing my firearms with me. I just like the pattern and it kind of blends in with some of the other gear that I use. So in talking with the people at Gunskins, they did provide these for review. I wanted to use something that I would just enjoy. So I could have gone a number of different ways, but adding the Kuyu Vias to my handgun, I thought would be definitely cool. It's cool. But is it practical? I do want to get into this discussion. I think it's fairly important. Now, I do have thought process that differentiates the handgun versus rifles and shotguns. I think this is a little bit of a different mentality depending on what you're trying to do. For me, I do have reservations with my handgun. We'll get into that. So first, let's change direction with the camera here. I'm gonna to talk to you about this in detail so you can understand how I came to this point, but more importantly, what some of my thought process is behind this. Now, as we get into this, you can see this is completely wrapped, but the first thing I'm gonna point out, Kuyu Camouflage is a licensed product. It is something that is very specific and, well, to me, Camouflage has an intended use and almost an intended, I would say, effectiveness. Now, the pattern is based on a macro pattern and a micro pattern. Macro pattern being how a pattern breaks up and conceals sort of your visual elements at distance. Micro pattern when you're a little more close up. So when you look at the true licensed Kuyu camouflage, this here is a true licensed Kuyu product, you can see the overall scale of this camouflage. Now I brought this up in my prior review with the rifle. As you take a look at my 1022, you'll notice that the people at Gunskins did scale down the actual pattern, I think for the reason being to actually fit the firearm and have more breakup on it, but I did have concerns that it does not necessarily match the same effectiveness as the true licensed product. And that's exacerbated even more on the handgun. Look how small this pattern is. Now, the overall effectiveness is definitely changed. You go from almost a lighter color to more of a mid-tone to more of a darker color. Now, is that a big deal? I don't know. It's, it's not like earth shattering, but at the same time, to me, it does not necessarily meet the intent of the Kuyu patterns. So personally, I would have loved it if Gunskins just left the scale alone 
and just kept it exactly what it was supposed to be. Now, granted, you'd end up with a little less pattern. Like, for example, if you look at some of the sheaths that I actually produce for my personal knife line, you know, I do have Kuyu products and there's not quite as much pattern on the sheath, but at the same time, it is actually basically the exact same effectiveness. So when you look at how the sheath breaks up against the actual jacket, it's very hard to see it there. In fact, it pretty much almost identically blends in. Now, you get some breakup with the rifle, I'll give you that. You get some breakup with the handgun, I'll give you that. I just wish it was the same as the original licensed camouflage. Now next, what are my thoughts about this being applied to the handgun? I mean, overall, it looks really cool. I mean, it does look cool. But the problem is, the phrase looks cool. I mean, some people are into firearms for the aesthetic appeal. I absolutely get that. Um, I do think this does have a breakup effectiveness. So if you're trying to use this for that sort of breakup effectiveness, it definitely has some. Now, I do have some concerns where this is now very slick, especially on the slide on these serrations. So that's the first thing. So there are some considerations that need to be brought into account. First is the mechanics, right? So the overall sort of ability to operate the firearm. So I did have some concerns. There are definitely a lot of steps that I had to take to make sure that this was still a proper, um, like adjusted and properly firing firearm. Like for example, making sure I cleaned up every single face that had sort of a mechanical moving part to make sure that there was no interference. Like for example, I had a real hard time at first operating my takedown lever. But now at least when I go to operate it, the takedown lever does work more properly. So swinging that down, no problem. But when you look close, you'll notice that it's kind of rubbing a little bit. You definitely need to be careful. So a little bit of rubbing going on there. Is it going to be a problem in the long term? I don't know, but it's definitely something to consider. So that's the first thing, just considering that you may be messing a little bit with the mechanics. I had to make sure that there was no interference between the slide and the frame that had to fit perfectly. It couldn't have any rubbing. I had to make sure, for example, my manual safety would flip up and down. It's a little bit tighter now. Is that going to change how it operates? Maybe a little bit. The interference potentially with the mag release or the magazine itself. I had to be very careful as to ensure that I did not mess with the overall mechanics. So you need to pay close attention through all the cutouts, like the barrel, your spring, there are just a lot of considerations to take into account when you get into this. But even more so, now at this point, this is very slick, especially on the serrations. It is really hard to grab this and rack it effectively. I can do it. I just need to be very, I don't know, just extra cautious and just like lock in and really grab it a little bit harder. The serrations at this point are a little bit slick and that has me concerned. And you can see that the one place where I struggle the most is to get this to stick into the serrations. The problem is what you do at the very end is you apply some final heat to get the glue all nice and soft and really adhere this to the metal, adhere it to the plastic and polymer. But Unfortunately, what that does is it kind of makes a little bit of a bubble and this did not stick down nearly as well as I would have hoped into the serrations. So it leaves it just slick. The other thing that I worry about is the long-term durability beneath the vinyl. Can there potentially be moisture that gets under there? Like if I left this on here for three years, five years, and I took this off, would my slide be all pitted? I have no idea. So from a practical standpoint on a handgun, I really don't know. Do I love the way it looks? I think it's pretty cool. Um, am I happy with how this turned out? Generally, yes. Generally, I think it went fairly well overall. It's pretty interesting where you can still see a lot of the words. It's interesting where you can see all the sort of grip on the handle. I am going to add the Hogue beaver tail grip over the top on this. And that I think is gonna definitely help. Now, I know it sounds ridiculous, 
but I don't want to lose the pattern. So I'm thinking of actually wrapping that, but that's just going to make it thicker and it'll be a little bit gummy. And I'm just curious if that will work out. So I'm going to add that to this by the end. But last but not least, I do have concerns with my sight adjustment. I'm hoping there's no tolerance issues with my slide cutout and the ability to get that rear sight properly uh, installed nice and tight at the right tolerances at the right elevation so that I'm not messing with my sight picture. And I would really hate to think, and I don't think I have too much in the way of concern that my actual rounds and you know spent cartridges uh, will properly uh, you know, exit out the side of the firearm here as they're ejected. So overall, I mean, I am a little bit concerned generally with the uh, mechanics, the functionality, and the overall purchase and grip I get on the firearm while I'm trying to use it. But at this point, let's go through the installation process of this skin so you can see how it is to actually install it onto your handgun. And so now as we get into the installation of the Gun Skins Pistol Skin Kit. First things first, a little bit of prep is going to go a long way. So you definitely want to degrease your firearm. Pistol Skin suggests using a product such as Frog Lube. So you'll see here, I did as good a job as I could to get my pistol completely degreased. There's no doubt that I do have some cleaner on here, it's CLP. So trying to get that off and really make it so that the skin can properly adhere to the slide and to the pistol grip is definitely a critical step. So you can see here, after all that work, doing the best I can. However, I did want to fully disassemble my pistol, getting all the little cutouts and as many of the details separated from the actual slide and pistol grip as best as possible. So you can see here, removing my sights and cleaning everything up even a little bit further so that I could address these separately and make sure that I have a good quality fit for the skin as well as fitting within all of the tolerances. So again, cleaning up everything to the best of my ability and getting all my fingerprints and getting all the grease and grime off of everything, this is definitely a critical step. Now this project is not extremely difficult. However, I can tell you that it is detailed and it's tedious. This can take quite a long time, so be prepared for a few hours worth of work. It is something that pretty much anybody can do, but for the most part, it is a tedious task. I can tell you that at certain points along the way, you will feel as though you're losing steam or you're going in the wrong direction, but fear not, just stick with it. And I can assure you, everything will work out in the end. You'll see that's the case for how I approached it and it definitely pays off when it's done. So now as we move forward, getting the skin ready, again, the Gun Skin Pistol Skin Kit. This comes with everything you need and this is in the color Kuyu Vias Camouflage. So here, each one of the sheets is individually labeled. You can see here the frame. You can see here the slide. It's pretty much all you need for a pistol and everything fitting on nicely. Now this could fit for a number of different pistols here again with my SIG P365 XL. Getting everything roughly fit and into place and kind of planning ahead, seeing how everything will work out. This is definitely an integral part of the process. So take your time, measure twice, and cut once because once you cut the skin well at that point you're pretty much stuck now you can cut these into individual pieces as you look here and you'll notice how i approached laying everything out trying to figure out the coverage and how everything would work for my particular firearm making marks in strategic locations, making some lines and cutting off excess to use it for later points in the project. So try to be careful, conserve your materials and make some strategic marks, cutting off specific pieces and leaving them for a later part in the process. Now you definitely need a good quality hair dryer or hot air gun. I chose a hot air gun and I do get mine up to temperature ahead of the project. So as I get everything ready and peeling off the skin, getting this ready for the slide and the application, the first thing I do is apply it kind of, I would call this quote unquote dry, and then add a little bit of heat to get this to soften up. You'll notice that pretty much right away, the vinyl does soften up. It starts to stretch and bend and really give you some contour. These pistol skins can definitely stretch quite a bit so you do need to be a little bit careful to get appropriate amounts of heat and not overheat the product. But as you see here, starting to fit this into place, 
Again, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes this seems like it can go a little bit sideways on you, but take your time, don't give up. This is fairly forgiving. If you get a little bit of a wrinkle or an area that doesn't work the best for you, you can definitely peel this and sort of reapply it. So again, take your time, think about what you're doing, and really work to getting the smooth parts as good as possible and worry about the wrinkles a little bit later. Worry about some of the difficult spots like the cutouts a little bit later. Just simply focus on getting this gun skin applied to the flattest and straightest parts as clean and as smooth as possible. You can see at times needing to take your knife and get some cuts established. I did manage to use a single razor blade for this entire part of the process, but I also did use a little bit of a strop and a ceramic rod to keep it touched up. Your blades might go dull fairly quickly, so you do need to pay attention to it. Now here, poking into the cutout on the slide, trying to find the edges, there is no doubt that at points, you might accidentally cut into parts of your firearm. If you're careful, it won't be deep. If you're careful, it won't be damaging, but you might just bump into it. So be prepared for that ahead of time. Now I did manage to find all the edges pretty easy without causing too much concern. And you can see here working towards cutting out the openings inside my slide. Once you get these cuts established, it does start to become a little more obvious what you're trying to do. So again, going in order first, Get your vinyl established onto the flat parts of your slide, then at that point start working on some of the cutouts. Now this is bigger, larger, and overlapping in areas, and I can address all of that later. So first things first, just trying to get everything established so that I can come up with a better game plan. So here, getting my slide cut out, you can see this is working fairly well. But again, it is a very tedious project, so don't get discouraged, stick with it, take your time, plan ahead, and you'll see once you start getting things cut out, the rest of the project becomes more obvious as you move through it. But with a little bit of patience, you'll see working at this and getting certain parts of the cutout removed. It's not perfect. It's a little bit messy. Don't worry. You can clean all that up later. Again, at the beginning portions of this project, just focus on getting established and getting everything started and into place. Now, every so often, you will need to apply heat to get the vinyl to move. It helps it bend, it makes it a little more flexible, and it helps you to get the vinyl wrapped around some of the difficult corners. Again, you'll see here, even though I'm wrapping the vinyl around the inside of the cutout, this is sort of temporary to keep everything locked in place and established. You do need to pretty much continue to work the vinyl. So again, heating it up strategically at times, getting it a little more pliable, getting it to the point where it can stretch and move and really contour the way you need finding the rest of the cutouts and continue to work through the serrations on the slide. This is one place where I definitely struggled. The serrations are a little bit tough where they're sort of indented and part of me wonders if I did an okay job cleaning up that particular part on the slide. So if there's any suggestions I can give you, pay good attention to your serrations, make sure you clean them up very well, getting good amounts of degreaser and paying attention to keeping them very clean throughout the process. But again, here you can see forming to the serrations, getting it wrapped under the underside of the slide. Again, no big deal. I'm pretty much using this vinyl to hold the skin in place while I continue to work it. I cut all this off by the end of the process. So don't worry about it being perfect. Just worry about getting it moved into place, starting to smooth it out and finding ways to actually lock this down and into place. Now at times you'll find there's wrinkles, there's bumps. Sometimes you can work them out. Sometimes you get kind of stuck. I was somewhere in the middle where I did okay, but there are some areas where I definitely ran into trouble. The serrations definitely giving me a very hard time, but continuing to work through this, as you can see, starting to smooth things out. There are a couple of wrinkles and a couple of bumps, but overall it's definitely starting to take shape kind of nice. And again, all my little pieces that I've taken off, I can address them separately. So here, my slide cover with my sights, you'll notice here getting this installed and into place, it does fit fairly well. I was careful to watch out for my tolerances to make sure this snapped down and into place nice and clean. And that's also including my sights. I didn't want to cause any problems. So I paid close attention to make sure everything fit nice and flush. But continuing to move through the process, 
adding a little final heat to the slide, making sure that I get everything pushed and form fit. After you get everything into place, you do need to apply final heat to get the adhesive nice and tacky to stick to the slide. And taking my time pressing down into the tough areas and trying to get the vinyl to stick, for the most part, it worked okay. Wrapping some final areas, like for example, underneath my slide, near the muzzle, where my spring protrudes, getting that wrapped and in its own little sub-project to make sure that I get good coverage. This would have been far too difficult to do it as one single integral piece. So again, think about your firearm in multiple stages and handle one piece at a time. It does mean you'll need to make some cuts but that's why we saved some of the extra material from the get-go, so that we had material to work with when we needed it. Again, continuing to apply heat when necessary, every single piece you put on will need a little bit of additional heat. And you can see at this point, continuing to work this, it's looking mighty nice. Now, even though it's all coming together, there is still some final touches on the slide. So working now towards the muzzle and tracing this shape, each little bit and piece you can certainly trace out if you so choose. I found that was the easiest way to work, making my own separate little cutouts and again, addressing each one of these areas as a little bit of a sub project. It's not a completely continuous piece of vinyl from beginning to end, but overall I found it was the most effective way to get a good quality coverage. I do have to admit I have the advantage where I've also done a full build out on my rifle. I did have a rifle skin and I've had some practice with these products already. So I knew some of these lessons going into this and I'm hoping some of my advice can save you a little bit of headache. But again, making strategic cutouts at the end of the muzzle in the barrel area, this needs to be done very specifically to make sure you don't have any problems with your ammo and the discharge of the firearm. Paying close attention, getting everything fit nice, this is definitely a critical area of detail. So working through, getting the vinyl nice and firm, and you'll see by the end of this, I get all these holes perfectly cut out. Getting all my pieces back into place, getting my slide fully set up, and my assembly, everything torqued down, getting my sights into place nice and firm to proper spec, and at this point, everything definitely shaping up. So now I can turn the corner to the handle. Now this is a little bit tricky, but the same principles apply. Plan everything out, make some strategic marks, get yourself a Sharpie, trace everything out, and make sure you leave enough for overlap. Again, I handled this in a few different pieces, but you can notice based on my marks, I left some room to overlap. Now you can cut this out of the way if you don't need it by the end, but if you cut it too short in the first place, you're kind of stuck. So getting this vinyl cut a little bit bigger than I need, but most specifically, keeping the excess so I can use it at a later time. Again, this is a critical part of this build. So now getting everything rough fit and onto the firearm. Again, I'm gonna call this dry fit. So dry fitting this onto the firearm. And once I'm feeling pretty good about how it fits, I start to press everything down. Once you start to press everything into place, all the little sort of cutouts and inside your trigger area and around your trigger guard and all those little areas start to reveal themselves. But before long, you will need to apply heat. Again, the heat's gonna help to get everything to move, form into the proper areas. It makes the vinyl a little more pliable and wrap into those areas. And you can see it starts to get a little bit floppy, which is a good thing. And again, pay attention to the details. Do not overstretch the vinyl. You can definitely go too far. And when the vinyl starts to cool down, well, guess what? It gets rigid again. So you don't have a ton of time to work and you may find that you need to apply continuous heat to keep things moving. But for me, just good pressure, starting to press into all the tight areas and getting the gun skin fit around your trigger guard, around your handle, around the grip, around the beaver tail, you'll notice that your handle grip starts to take shape underneath the vinyl, and that's when you can really start to come up with a game plan. So again, just fit things to the best of your ability, leave plenty of overlap, everything can be cleaned up as you go. Don't fear, just kinda go with it, let the product do what it needs to do, and make sure you get the flat area smooth, that's the first place to start. You will start to need to make some strategic cuts, so I opted to cut out my trigger guard first. Getting this area fully established, which does two things. One, 
it helps me understand the firearm layout a little bit better, but two, it gets the vinyl locked into place. Now keep in mind, anything you don't want, again, you can cut this out later. So just use this vinyl to your advantage to allow you to smooth everything out, get it out of the way, and get it tucked underneath so everything starts to lock into place. That's a key part with this product. It is a medium. Every medium you work with, doesn't matter what it is, whether it's clay or paint, or in this case, vinyl wrap, it has its own sort of parameters. So learning how to work with the vinyl and learning how these parameters are, it's definitely a learning curve. But at this point, you can see stretching the vinyl and getting some overlap again Doing it this way gives me options. If I cut this too short, I would have been stuck. And all the extra pieces, you'll notice, I cut them out of the way later. Now the trigger area, definitely the most testy. It has some funny curves. It makes the vinyl stretch weird. And again, you'll notice I ended up with some wrinkles, but not a huge deal. Overall, it came out pretty good. I'm fairly happy with it. And you'll notice again, I left the back of the handle for a separate overlap. Same with the front of the handle. I started to cut this off nice and square so that it didn't have too much overlap and bumps under my next section of the vinyl. But fully wrapped around the trigger guard and up around the muzzle, this is starting to look pretty good. At this point, going to the opposite side of the firearm, you can see on the handle grip, doing the exact same thing, cutting out my piece a little bit too large, leaving some room for overlap. The very same way I handled the other side is exactly how I'm going to approach this side. Save the extra, you may need it for later. Again, dry fitting this side of the handle grip, getting this into place, starting to press everything, get some form, get some function, and immediately going to the hot air gun. Getting the hot air gun running, getting the vinyl nice and soft, having the vinyl sort of set into some of the trouble areas, getting a little bit of definition with the actual handle grip and having the vinyl settle into some of the deeper areas. You can see again to the point where it's able to stretch to my advantage. And as I continue to push and form, I am literally approaching this the exact same way as the first side. So paying attention to all the areas, up into the proprietary rail, around all of the important areas of contact up around the beaver tail, and then cutting out my trigger guard area. So the exact same approach on both sides of the firearm. And at this point, you can see very good results. Great coverage overall. This took quite a while. You definitely need to set aside a few hours for this project. At this point, I'm into it for probably about two and a half hours. Now, the very last thing you can see as I got both sides wrapped, as I mentioned, I did treat the back as its own little sub piece. This had an advantage where it was able to be nice and square. I was able to get this really smooth and it didn't create any weird bumps. You could definitely approach this another way if you wanted to and really had a little bit of overlap underneath the handle but for me I thought getting a piece over the top was going to be a little bit better and again remember that you can use your knife to kind of square things away and straighten it out if things don't go quite perfect take your time and just straighten things out as you go it might not come out perfect but it's going to be darn close and last but not least, you can see, making sure I clean up inside all the areas like my takedown lever, my manual safety, the slide release, all those areas are critical areas of mechanical importance and especially in my magazine area. So getting my mag release all cleaned up, inside the mag well all cleaned up, along the slide all cleaned up, everything with mechanical connection and mechanical functionality is absolutely critical to get it perfect. And that did take me a while. After I got the skin fully set and into place and even with my final heat, I did take a final pass at everything. Going over the handle grip module, going over the slide and looking at every single area with mechanical connection, making sure that it all functioned perfectly. That to me is absolutely critical with a handgun and at this point starting to fit everything together. So getting my tolerances, making sure everything fit. You'll notice every now and then you may have got to punch. At this point, just going back, making sure that was punched out just fine. And now at this point, able to get my fire control unit inside the grip assembly. 
So reassembling everything, getting it all back into good working order, testing everything out, getting my slide fit, just making sure all my tolerances were correct. You'll notice that I still had a little bit of work to do inside my slide cutout. No big deal. Take your time. Go back at it. You'll notice my barrel nice and clear. No problem. No potential for snags inside the slide assembly. Perfect. And at this point, definitely ready to put this back together and get this into good quality service. It is a tedious process. It is a little bit stressful, but just stick with it. You can definitely do this. And so now as you've seen the process to getting this on, I mean, it is definitely tedious. I did not do a perfect job, but I have to say it went fairly well. Now, keep in mind a few things as I wrap up my thoughts. Again, obviously I do have concerns with the overall mechanics. The slide being metal, I think is a little bit of a downfall. That has me a little bit concerned. And the fact that a handgun relies on so much dexterity and sort of like fine motor skills to actually operate it when you need it and the potential intended purpose of your handgun. Where in reality with the rifle, you don't quite have that same problem. And you can see the way this is built out. I have plenty of areas to grip where if it was a little bit slick, it doesn't really impact it at all. And in fact, the motor skills don't really get impacted too much because you're not messing with anything like your charging handle or really any of the sort of, you know, buttons or triggers or, you know, anything like that really is not so much impacted by the skin where I think you do have a lot more impact with the handgun. It's just the nature of the beast, the handgun really relying on so many motor skills. So that definitely is a concern. Now let's take this to the next step. Like for example, do you end up with any interference in your holsters? Well, this particular holster here, this here is a VersaCarry holster uh, in the waist belt style. Uh, I don't see any potential issues with this. In fact, you can see the muzzle just sticking out the bottom, no problem, no worries at all. Fits in nice, seems to have just good overall retention. So no problem if your holster is like this style or even potentially leather. And well, what if you wanna put on a weapon light? At this point, you can see inside the rail, which is a proprietary rail that is now filled with the sort of vinyl. Um, it, you know, could you cut that out of there? Sure. Um, I did not, I left it wrapped, but my intent is to use this Streamlight TLR7 sub with the SIG proprietary rail adapter. Now, as I go to put this on here and trying to fit this into place, will it go on here without damaging my skin? I don't, I don't know. Hard to say. It looks like it went and it looks like it went fairly well overall. So at this point, I'm gonna tighten this down and that should set the firearm onto the handle module. Overall, that feels pretty good. It went well, no problem. Functionality, just fine on the weapon light. So that's gonna work out just fine for me. So, so far, not too bad in that regard. But you can see that now at this point, it's really started to bubble up on the side of that rail. So there are some spots where, unfortunately, the fact that this didn't stick down quite as tight or as nice as I would have liked. It's leaving it a little bit suspect, but still not terribly detrimental to the overall functionality. Now here another in the waistband style holster. This actually does leverage the firearm light in order to get the proper retention. So I do not expect any issues here and that fits just fine. So just about perfect. And you can see there how it fits and how it looks. So no worries there. Um, over time, will the gun skin sort of wear? I'm not too sure, I don't think so. I don't think this is actually wearing on it as it goes into this holster because it is being held on essentially by the weapon light. So I don't think that's gonna be a problem. And yeah, looking in there, no worries at all. So in that regard, depending on the type of holster you have, uh, you may or may not have any issues. Now I do have one final holster, but unfortunately it's not specific to my P365XL and I do just have a standard Kydex. I wish I could test this for you. Uh, the one thing I can say 
is this does have adjustable retention. So if, for example, this was to fit my 365 XL and I found it was a little tight, I could certainly loosen up on this and the firearm would probably fit just fine. So if you have a Kydex similar to this, I do suspect you would probably be able to make this work. It's just gonna be a little bit tight going into the holster and you may need to mess with your retention a little bit. But all in all, definitely a cool project. I love the way this looks. I think it is absolutely fantastic. It's in my favorite camo pattern. But well, at this point, let's wrap it up with my final thoughts. So, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the Gun Skins Pistol Kit for my SIG P365XL. Now, of course, you can do this on any handgun. This is a pistol kit, so it's pretty much good and sized for mostly any handgun. I'm sure you're going to find exceptions, but this is a pretty good size kit. And in fact, at this point, I still have a bunch of material left. So as you look at all the leftover material here, just a bunch. I could do a number of different things with this if I really so choose. Like for example, maybe dressing up the end plates on my magazines. Certainly if I wanted to, I could get into like completely camouflaging my weapon light. You could probably use bits and pieces of this carefully to sort of dress up your sheath. So again, a number of different things you can do, but all in all, what do I think about this? I mean, there's, there's a number of different ways to think about it. First off, I mean, how do I like the way it looks? I love it. Do I like the product? I do. Do I think the product actually goes on fairly well and behaves fairly well? Once you get used to it and how it sort of reacts, I do. I did a pretty good job cleaning the firearm overall, so I'm surprised in the areas where it didn't stick. But at the same time, if it wasn't going to stick, these are the areas where it would struggle. I'm glad that my weapon light's on here. I'm glad that mechanically, for the most part, everything seems to work. And as you see there, my hand's slipping off. I'm glad for the most part this does functionally work, but I am concerned with my grip on the slide. You could see there, it's just slick. My hand slipping off, and even when I thought I had good positive grip, it just takes a bunch to like really put that extra effort into keeping a good positive grip. So on the handgun, I do have to admit I'm a little bit concerned from the... Hmm, safety and uh, you know when I say safety I'm really thinking like concealed carry and self-defense need if you're just using your handgun for sport or for target shooting it's probably not that big of a deal but if you intend on carrying this I just think you really want to think carefully about whether or not you want to put a skin on this but for a rifle or for a shotgun no problem. Fantastic. In fact, I really think it looks great. I like how it sort of blends in with the rest of everything else. And the only other thing I can say is I'm just a little bummed out about the pattern. I wish they were a little more sort of realistic to the size of the true licensed Kuyu Vias pattern. But again, other than that, it's still definitely cool. And so again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people at Gunskins who did provide this for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is my primary channel. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it from sleep systems, shelter systems, backpacks, knives, axes, flashlights, you name it. That's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.